ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ഭരണത്തിന് കീഴിലേ ദൈവാരാധന at the appointed time all such questions will be answered if you have patience before you make any covenant or friendship with anyone take holy spirit with you jalathalum aathmavinalum janikkunnillengil oru venum devarajyathil praveshikkuka sadhyamalla god be with you and with your spirit reading from the holy gospel according to saint mark glory to you o lord One of the scribes came up to Jesus and put a question to him which is the first of all the commandments Jesus replied this is the first listen Israel the Lord our God is the one Lord and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength the second is this you must love your neighbor as yourself there is no command there greater than these the scribes said to him well spoken master what you have said is true that he is one and there is no other to love with all your heart with all your understanding and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself this is far more important than any holocaust or sacrifice jesus seeing how wisely he had spoken said you are not far, far from the kingdom of god and after that no one dared to ask, question him any more the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ please be seated my dear brothers and sisters today we just heard from the bible what is the most important law the most important law out of all these 10 commandments what is the biggest the most powerful command commandment of god that love your god honor your god there is no other god for you there is only one god honor him with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength with all capacity that god has given you so that is the most important one and the second one is love your neighbors love others as yourself as you love yourself my dear brothers and sisters these days i was just reflecting about this uh, the first commandment honoring god giving more importance for god more than everything else in this world so sometime back i was reflecting about the christianity and then one question that came into my mind what is happening to the christianity today what is happening to the christianity today let us make a comparison between the old and new the christianity in the first century second century third century and the christianity in the 21st century what is the difference between these two so when i was reflecting about all these one thing i noticed the christianity in the first century second century and third century was more powerful than today and christianity in the first century and second century they were so faithful and committed to god than today they were a challenge for everyone they were different from all the other humanity all the other human beings their love and their unity their their support their con- commitment to god their love for god was outstanding and everyone was you know attracted to christianity looking at the way the christians were living but now what is happening to the christianity the christianity you know in every religion there are problems there is christian in christianity there is problem the other religions they also have unforgiveness problem and the christians also have got un- unforgiveness problem the other people are committing sin and they are caught by the public you know if you if you take all the criminals all the criminal record of the police every religion has got their members in the criminal list even christians also in that list now my dear brothers and sisters there is something wrong in what we are doing today there is something some mistake is taking place in our christian way of life now we know that in in european countries the christianity is growing uh, going down in some say some surveys says the christianity is going down but in some other surveys say the christianity growing but one thing i know 
the christianity which is not following christ is going down 100% sure but the christianity which is so committed to god is growing even in europe and other places i will explain to you the difference between these two my dear brothers and sisters it's very shocking to see something there are many christians early christians died for so many principles which they believed these principles which they believed was nothing but the command of jesus they died for this they never compromised but in the 21st century we the christians are compromising the teaching of god command of god especially the the command of first commandment we are compromising by the brothers brothers and sisters everywhere we can see we are compromising in the name of inculturation in the name of adapting in the society in the name of pleasing other human beings we are compromising the command of god especially the first commandment is compromised everywhere therefore it is not just the ordinary people who are also responsible but not only them even we the priests and bishops we are all responsible because we are compromising the teaching of god so that is why i said there is no much difference the christianity is no more a challenge in this world we are not giving a role model in front of other religions the suppose if a new person who is never known new to uh, never knew christianity when he comes to know the christianity he doesn't see any difference in the christianity than other religions it was not like this in the early church that real and true christianity was not like this my dear brothers and sisters somewhere we have lost the true sense of the christianity now we are just surviving we are trying to survive many parishes are just trying to maintain in order that we know we may not lose the parishness we are compromising we are compromising without up faith i remember i went to a, another country and then i met the priest and we were conducting a retreat there for the retreat for the retreat there was only hardly 10 people were there in the retreat it was in an, another country i don't want to mention the name of that country but in that retreat we had gone for with all team music team and everyone it was in a remote area and we all went there when we went for retreat there was hardly 10 people and we were shocked and because in other churches we were getting many people but this church we were so shocked to see the small number so parish priest and during the service uh during the service i heard big noise from the next door and near the church there was a parish hall from the parish hall there was a sound system blasting sound system there is some dancing some programs and some noises were going on so it was disturbing in fact the service that was going on in the church then i spoke to the parish priest and said father what was that noise then parish priest said that was some dance programs plus some gambling program then where is it taking place i asked them asked the father then parish priest said that is our parish hall so i said who is in charge father the committee is in charge so do we do, do the church get that uh, money for that yes we get the money rent that's how we maintain the church my dear brothers and sisters i was so hurt my dear brothers and sisters these churches being maintained by doing all these kinds of things in the church hall in the parish hall from that money the churches by churches are being maintained why the people the parishioners are not interested to support the parish the priests are forced to go for some other methods to get money to maintain the church my dear brothers and sisters the money that is collected from the gambling business will never bring any anointing for the church but instead it will take away the anointing and grace from the church my dear brothers and sisters let me tell you something with pain in my heart 
we are compromising compromising in order to maintain some structures we are compromising with our teachings we speak against gambling we speak against so many people who are being destroyed because of drugs and drinks and all the other things and we are compromising here we are just closing our eyes when these things are taking place in our own parishes let me tell you all those who are listening to me if your parish or any other institution which is supporting any kind of these things Ill, immoral illegal maybe it is legal for the country but remember anything that is against the word of god anything that is against the bible cannot be tolerated by us the church even if it is allowed by the country because the country also supports abortion doesn't mean the church has to accept it and therefore if any one of your parish or any other areas which are doing something like this and getting money from it my dear brothers and sisters as a parishioner you will be accountable and answerable along with the parish priest in front of god you know why it is because we are not supporting our parishes that that is why everyone has to go for all these illegal methods or maybe uh, the uh, against non religious methods to get money for the support of the parishes my dear brothers and sisters there are many things i would like to tell you one by one which we are compromising in this modern world in the church in that christianity in the name of inculturation we bring other gods inside the churches in order to just please some communities we can please the communities we have to love them accept them that is not at the cost of our faith and the commandment of our lord jesus when we do it by violating the commandment of god the first commandment remember we are bringing calamities and pandemic against the humanity we are permitting so that the protection of god be lost my dear brothers and sisters i would like to give you some word of god the biggest problem today in the church is we are speaking very much about the compassion and mercy and forgiveness of god very true god loves us god forgives us god shows compassion there is no doubt about it but there is something else more there is something more that is we have to speak about the fear of the lord we have to speak about the fear of the lord moses taught very clearly about the fear of the lord and in the old testament people were really fear having the fear of the lord they respected the ark of the covenant so much if someone desecrate the ark of the covenant we know the consequence in the bible what happened to them they respected the tabernacle very much they respected the temple jerusalem temple very much they will never make even swearing in the name of the temple they used to go to the temple with holiness they respected it moses taught them very clearly but the new testament moses jesus he also taught the same thing but since jesus spoke so much about holiness i mean compassion forgiveness and love we only focus about these and we conveniently forgot the fear of the lord conveniently ignoring the fear of the lord we are conveniently avoiding the fear of the lord my dear brothers and sisters we think even if we commit sin again and again and again don't worry we can just go for confession and get rid of the sin there is precious blood of jesus it is available for us to wash us and cleanse us it's so easy but at the same time we should never forget there are certain teachings in the bible it is very important my dear brothers and sisters I remember some time back when I was going for a long journey I had to go to the washroom we stopped in one small area and then we went to the washroom when I went to the washroom the washroom was so dirty and filthy and all these things it was smelling too much and I didn't feel like going inside then the shopkeeper said don't worry you can go inside and have and we will give you the soap and water is so cheap here my dear brothers and sisters the soap and the soap and water is so cheap therefore no problem in going to this dirt again and again and again 
Many people are considering the blood of Jesus as the soap and water. We can just go and commit sin and commit sin and then go and wash this with the soap and water. The precious blood of Jesus is so precious, it is not just so cheap. It is so precious. My dear brothers and sisters, this is very important. Let us read some passages in the word of God. Let us read Hebrew chapter, uh, Hebrew chapter 10 verse 26 onwards. Hebrew chapter tw uh, 10 verse 26 onwards. Let us read this passage. This is very important. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 26 onwards. For if we willfully persist in sin, after having received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. My dear brothers and sisters, Bible speaks very clearly about the fear of the Lord. God says, Bible says, if we willfully persist in the sin again and again and again, thinking that we can go for confession and get rid of the sin, without having any fear of the Lord, the Lord says, then this sin will not be forgiven. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Because we are taking the blood of Jesus for, for granted. We are taking the blood of Jesus for granted. We are using the blood of Jesus just like we use soap and water. Every now, since soap and water, we don't mind going into the dirt. Because there is soap and water. This is not fear of the Lord. This is utilizing the compassion and mercy. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, this is very uh, important to know. Let us continue reading. For if he willfully persist in sin, then there, there no longer, if he willfully persist in sin after having received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Verse 7, 27. But a fearful prospect of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Normally these kinds of words of God we can see only in the Old Testament. Very rarely we see this kind of very strong word of God in the New Testament. But in the New Testament as well this strong word of God is there. We should never forget. My dear brothers and sisters, people should know this truth. I was preparing this talk and I was, uh, I knew the, there will be a lot of uh, criticism against this preaching, whether, you, whether many people may not like it. Even the evil one did not like it, that's why it got disconnected, the live streaming. My dear brothers and sisters, but let me tell you, this is a clear sign, this has to be preached. And listen very carefully, continue reading. But a fearful prospect of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Verse 28. Anyone who has violated the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Because the Old Testament is so strict. 29, verse 29. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by those who have spurned the Son of God, profane the blood of, blood of Christ? My dear brothers and sisters, those who violated the Old Testament covenant, they had terrible consequences of it. Now, Bible says, therefore, if anyone violates the New Testament covenant, there will be more, there will be more consequences. Since we are preaching so much about compassion, mercy and forgiveness, we just ignore this aspect. We conveniently avoid this aspect. Remember, the consequence of the sin in the Old Testament, if you want to know the consequence of the sin in the Old Testament, I'll give you some passages from the Word of God. It is very strict. Very strict in the Old Testament. Let us read. Let us read. Uh, um, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 20 uh, sorry uh, Exodus chapter 23 verse 13 onwards Ex Exodus chapter 23 verse 13 onwards let us read 23 13 be attentive to all that I have said to you do not invoke the names of other gods do not let them be heard on your lips be attentive to all that I have said to you. 
do not invoke the names of other gods do not let them be heard on your lips let us also read exodus chapter 23 verse 24 23 24 you shall not bow down to their gods or worship them or follow their practices but you shall utterly demolish them and break their pillars in pieces in the old testament god never permitted us to compromise with our faith do not worship or bow down or visit to any other gods let us also read deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 29 onwards Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 29 onwards. Let us read once again. Read once sec uh, from the beginning. When the Lord, when the Lord your God has cut off before you the nations whom you are about to enter to dispossess them. When you have dispossessed them and live in their land. Next. Take care that you are not snared into imitating them. Don't imitate those gods those cultures those evil practices of those people don't imitate them after they have been destroyed before you do not, do not inquire concerning their gods don't be so scrupulous or curious about their gods don't inquire of their gods saying how did these nations worship their gods many people are taking doctorates in other religions we are too inquiring about other, other gods. We have no time to think about our, our God, the only God, the true God. How did these nations worship their gods? I also want to do the same. People say, let me also follow those gods. Their culture, their songs, their way of, way of worship. In the name of inculturation, we just follow them. Thinking, let me see how they follow and let me also follow. Let me also, I want to do the same. My dear brothers and sisters, because of these, many churches have defiled. Many churches are defiled. In many places, we, knew, we know through the news that other gods were invited in front of the blessed sacrament in, in the churches and kept and desecrate the church. My dear brothers and sisters, no other legion will accept it. In, remember, in the early Christianity, many of our ancestors, many Christians were killed because they were not ready to bow down in front of any pagan gods. They were not ready to compromise their faith. That is why all these early Christians were killed, my dear brothers and sisters. If they knew about our today's inculturation, none of, the, none of them would have been destroyed. None of them would have been killed. And none of them would have become saints. My dear brothers and sisters, in order to please human beings, we are compromising, 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 and now the church is being disappeared. The churches by, are being sold to the pubs and hotels. My dear brothers and sisters, we don't need to wor worry about maintaining the church. We don't need to worry about just please the human being and make sure that they don't leave, leave the church. When you, when you compromise and please the human beings, then you may have to listen to them. Don't listen to any human beings and listen to Jesus. And only then you will be able to flourish and bring the church back to, the, back to this earth and bring the church powerful in this world. My dear brothers and sisters, this is very important. Let's continue. Their gods saying, how did these nations worship their gods? I also want to do the same. Okay, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 13. 13 verse 1 onwards. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 onwards. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 onwards. If prophets are or those who divine by dreams appear among you and promise you omens or portents. Many Catholics, many Christians are going to other gods, other temples and worship them. You remember, no other religion in this world will allow you to carry your Eucharist and keep it in their temple or keep it in front of their gods. They will never tolerate but we are compromising. We don't mind. 
praise the lord and and now our own christians are going to the witchcraft black magic many people they are going to palm readings soothsayers uh, foretellings we are our own people are going the christians are going to the witchcraft and black magicians to know about future my dear brothers and sisters don't you know that this is the sin against first commandment this will create you will lose your protection i remember one family whom i know they are going through big trouble they were once upon a time very rich people they had a visa issue they were giving visa to many people and then then the, something happened and they had to lose their whole property suddenly and then he had some other uh, uh, problems and then one by one all uh, sicknesses started coming and attacking them division started in the family money was lost and whatever the business that they started it is perishing nothing, nothing is successful and then when they came for prayer the lord revealed one thing some years ago being a good catholic influenced by his friend he went he took some 40, some 40 days of fasting or something and went to a pagan worship center to get money and power his friend told he is a non christian his friend told him if you come with me to come and worship this god you have to take 40 days of fasting and all those things and come with me and go to a mountain and then pray then you will become rich person so he believed it now he is struggling to survive my dear brothers and sisters let us read this he prophets or those who divine by dreams appear among you and promise you omens or portents if anyone give you soothsayers or future telling people or black, black magicians or, or anything anybody if they tell you promise you something and the omens or the portents declared by them take place even if it is taking place and they say let us follow other gods whom you have not known let us serve them if anyone say come let us serve them let us follow them even if what they say happens next one word of god says verse 3 you must not heed the words of those prophets or those who divine by dreams or the or for the lord your god is testing you through all these God is testing you my dear brothers and sisters do not compromise with your faith if you are going through a financial problem don't worry your god is capable of giving you back everything you don't need to go after all these black magicians and evil practices this is why did god permit this suffering in your life he is testing you whether you love him or you want to compromise with your faith my dear brothers and sisters this is very important we read like this in the word of god next one you must not heed the words of those prophets or those who divine by dreams for the lord your god is testing you to know next whether you indeed love the lord your god with all your heart and soul who are the people who are going for black magic and witchcraft and all those things those who do not love god more than everything else if any one who are watching me if any one of you have gone for this black magic or palm reading or any kind of superstitious beliefs or any other gods any other temple or any other places and bow down in order to please human beings please your own family members remember ask forgiveness repent very seriously because it will take the protection away from you the protection of god will be lost in your family because it's a sin against first commandment it affects the head first because it's a first commandment praise the lord praise the lord verse 6 and 8 6 to 8 oh sorry verse 4 let's read 4 deuteronomy 13 verse 4 the lord your god you shall follow him alone you shall fear his commandments you shall keep his voice you shall obey him you shall serve to him you shall hold fast bible says very clearly the lord your god you shall follow nobody else 
my dear brothers and sisters we are desecrating this in the name of i feel so bad in many places in the name of inculturation we have desecrated eucharist we make the make uh, uh, many things inside the church i don't want to give all the publicity for such kinds of evil practices those who have seen such kinds of practices you will understand what i'm trying to say but i don't want to use this platform of divine rity sender to give publicity for all these evil practices which many of our friends are doing it but let me tell you these things are dangerous for the church dangerous that is why the church is not so no not any more so powerful like the first century christianity this is the reason many calamities are taking place in the whole world and we feel helpless we believe in a god who has the command on this nature he calmed the sea with one word he rebuked the wind and with one word but we feel helpless in this pandemic in these calamities because we lost the credibility we lost the integrity of our faith we are compromising many churches i was feeling so bad in uh, okay i'll come to, come to that point let us let, let me complete this word of god chapter 3 13 and verse 6 onwards let us read chapter 13 verse 6 onwards let us read if anyone secretly entices you even if it is your brother your father's son your mother's son or your own son or daughter or the wife you embrace some people uh, get married to non christians embrace them marry them if anyone secretly entices you even if it is your brother your father's son or your mother's son or your own daughter or the wife of you of you embrace or your most intimate friend saying what it what they are, what do they say let us go worship other gods whom neither you nor your ancestors have known my dear brothers and sisters i know one girl came and said father we are going through a big problem continuous problems and uh, many calamity i don't want to mention the the problems that they are facing because sometimes you may think all your problems also connected to this problem uh, so this family is going through some problem so the lord said to them about their marriage so i asked them are you married then said yes father of course we are married then again the lord said there is some problem with the marriage then i asked them are you married in the church then they said yes we are married in the church then again when we prayed the lord said again the same area there is problem then i said there is some problem with your marriage do you see do you remember anything did you confess before marriage all these things then she said everything was okay and then after some time she said suddenly father i married to a non christian which i knew that she was married she married to a non christian and then i said okay there uh, but you married in the church right then she said yes but then she said but after the marriage in the church we also went to the temple and married in the temple too then i said why did you do that because he told me that i didn't want to hurt him i didn't want to hurt him then i told her what about this word of god are you not hurting god who is important for you my dear brothers and sisters you may feel i may i, I looks like i'm preaching something fanatic but let me tell you i'm just preaching what the word of god is word of god love your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength with all your capacity why are you compromising with in front of a human being it is he one who give you birth my dear brothers and sisters are we are accountable not in front of a husband not in front of a wife we are unaccountable in front of a god who created us we should never make any compromise with these let us go worship other gods whom neither you nor your ancestors have known next one verse 7 any of the gods of the peoples that are around you whether near you or far away from you from one end of the earth to the other next verse 8 
you must not yield to or heed any such persons show them no pity or compassion and do not shield them you must not yield or heed any such persons my dear brothers and sisters as priest many priests also have committed sin by encouraging these kinds of practices in the churches in the church halls parish halls and other places thinking that some income will come to the parish or maybe not to please not to hurt any of the parishioners we also have compromised we have to ask forgiveness in front of god for these my dear brothers and sisters this is very important if you if you want to know what i'm trying to speak is it catholic or not just read just read catechism of the catholic church uh, the, the paragraph number 2 2000 onwards if you go go on reading this then you will come to know this is not just my teaching this is in the catechism of the catholic church my dear brothers and sisters i remember many many places you know for example when marriages are taking place in the name of marriages my dear brothers and sisters we have a tradition of having so many saints who sacrifice their life for their body for their holiness if you know saint lucy she was killed because she did not allow anyone to touch her body with an unholy intention and that is why some people who are aiming at her because she was so beautiful they wanted to get married to her they wanted to take uh, uh, use her they came and attacked they pierced their eyes pierced her eyes and they tried to burn her whole body with fire but still she said i will never desecrate my body we have so many saints like this if i tell you the examples hundreds of saints who sacrifice their life to keep the holiness of their body but here the new age the 21st century christians we don't mind we water down every teaching we compromise we don't mind even looking at others with any dirt pictures or anything we don't mind we are compromising because we think okay i can go for confession okay the blood of jesus can wash me there is nothing to worry my dear brothers and sisters let us read once again hebrew chapter 10 verse 27 onwards 28 onwards we were reading it let's continue that anyone who has violated the law of moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses 29 how much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by those who has spurned the son of god profane the blood of the covenant by which they were sanctified and outraged the spirit of grace we have spirit of grace means holy spirit we have hurt the holy spirit we have committed sin against the precious blood of jesus by violating each time the commandment of god next one verse 13 for we know the one who said vengeance is mine i will repay and again the lord will judge his people the lord will judge his people continue it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Was thirty two. Sometimes beam, but recall those earlier days when, after you had been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings. Remember about your first conversion. Remember the early Christianity. We have so many saints from the early Christians who sacrificed their life. Hundreds of saints. but we don't have much saints though the christian numbers are almost nearly 2 3 billion people in the whole world but the saints are hardly one or two but in the first century we had thou- only 1000 ha- people or 2000 people or 10000 out of which hundreds of saints being created every day i think there is something wrong in our faith to do today seriously we need to rethink 
every aspect from the top to down from the down to top but recall those earlier days when after you had been enlightened you endured a hard struggle with sufferings verse 33 sometimes being publicly exposed to abuse and persecution and sometimes being partners with those so treated we were going through our ancestors went through all these to protect their faith and keep their faith Daniel was in that sent to that den of den of uh, lions because he was not ready to bow down in front of another god but here in order to please other human beings we bow down in front of anybody any other gods i remember some time back i went to a, give a retreat in one parish the parish priest was not seen anywhere so when I looked around, I didn't see the blessed sacrament kept for the exposition of the blessed sacrament. Then I asked him, uh, as one of the people who was standing there, then I asked, where is the blessed sacrament? Then he said, Father, don't worry, you be there. I will show you. And then I was standing in front of the altar, I just waiting. He, I thought he will come and show me the place where the blessed sacrament, the Eucharist. But then suddenly, he is coming with the, in one hand he is holding the eucharist and coming straight to the altar and kept it on the altar this is the blessed sacrament i was so shocked this man is handling the eucharist just like he is handling a chocolate my dear brothers and sisters look at the old testament how, do they, how did they treat the Eucharist? How did they treat the Ark of the Covenant? Even David was so, the, he's the king. He was afraid even to just come closer to the Ark of the Covenant. Uzzah, a man, unknowingly, when he found the Ark of the Covenant, he's about to fall down. He just touched the Ark of the Covenant. Instantly, he, was, he fell down and died. Such was the seriousness that was given to the Holy of Holies in the Old Testament. Remember, in the Ark of the Covenant, only these three things, manna, the tablets, and the, and the, the staff of the Aaron, staff of the bedded staff. It is, it is not God, it's some symbols. But in, in spite of that being that only a symbol, it was given so much of importance and holiness, but here, when we are handling the Eucharist, which is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, we are handling, handling it so casually. Many Eucharistic ministers may be watching me today. My dear brothers and sisters, be very careful about what you are doing. It is your duty to make sure everything connected to the church and everything connected to the temple, everything connected to the altar, everything connected to the spiritual things should be dealt and carried and used and handled properly in a holy way. Those who handle the holy things holy in holiness will be made holy. Let us read Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 onwards. Malachi chapter 6 verse 1, uh, chapter 1 verse 6 onwards. Let us read this passage. Everybody can read. As son honors his father and servants their master. If then I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the honor due me? If I am a, if I am a master, where is the respect due me? The Lord says, I am your God, I am your master, where is the respect for me? You respect your parish priest, you respect your superiors, you respect everyone. You respect all those people. You respect the police officers. You respect the bishop. You respect everyone. But God says, I am, your I am your master. I am your father. Where is the respect for me? If then I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord of hosts to you. Next one, verse 7. My dear brothers and sisters, these are all the sin against first commandment. As son or... O oh, priest who despise my name, you say, how have we despised your name? Let's continue next one. By offering polluted food on my altar and you say, how have we polluted it? You know, 
the lord says you are despising my name by not honoring me my by not respecting me then the priest said lord how are we despised your name then the lord said you are offering polluted food on my altar by doing so you are despising my name continue 7 verse 7 by pollute offering polluted food on my altar and you say how are we polluted it by thinking that the lord's table may be despised by thinking that the lord's table may be despised was eight when you offer blind animals in sacrifice with is that not wrong and when you offer those that are lame or sick is that not wrong the lord says try presenting that your governor will be will he be pleased with you or show you favor my dear brothers and sisters it is our duty to protect our parishes if our parish church is not maintained well every parishioner will be answerable in front of god if our parish church is going for any compromising the word of god in order to maintain the churches then every parishioner every parishioner will be responsible in front of god it is our duty to protect and maintain and keep the well being and updating of the churches praise the lord if the churches are falling down and our houses are so safe and sound that is not a good sign my dear brothers and sisters praise the lord thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit praise you jesus praise you lord many people in today's place i was talking to one priest when i went for a, give a retreat he said father you have to preach in such a way that everyone should be happy we should not speak too much about the sin and all those things we it's okay you just speak about god's love and forgiveness love and all these things but be very careful because then i said if i speak about the sin what will happen then he said father then everyone will go my dear brothers and sisters we are afraid of losing people i'll give you one word of god first samuel chapter 13 was 9 king saul what was the problem the sin of king saul king saul committed a sin the biggest sin the king saul committed because of which god said i regret that i made him a priest sorry i made him a king i regret that i made him a king maybe today my brother priest and all the others i would we would like to reflect maybe today the lord must be looking at and say i regret that i made you a priest because you are compromising so saul said bring the burnt offering here to me and the offerings of well being because only priests were allowed to sacrifice the offertory we mean the sacrifice the king was not allowed even if he is the king he is not allowed only the priest the prophet has to come and do it but the king was waiting 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 for the prophet to come but the prophet did not come in time so what happened the king saul said bring the burnt offering here to me and the offerings of well being and he offered the burnt offering so king said okay even if god priest is not there don't worry i am the king i will do it my dear brothers and sisters there are certain ministries entitled to certain people let them do their work we should never take charge of it if we are not called for it and here the king saul though he is the king he has power and everything but he is not supposed to do anything though, that is of god and then bring the burnt offering and he did the burnt offering what happened verse 10 as soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering samuel arrived and Saul went out to meet him and salute him verse 11 Samuel said what have you done Saul replied when i saw that the people were slipping away from me you know the prophet was so angry and by the filled with the holy spirit the prophet said what have you done then king Saul said i saw the people are slipping away from me my parishioners are reducing each day in order to please them i started compromising 
the money bank account is reducing in order to maintain the church i start a compromising and start start a renting my the church hall for all kinds of evil practices and now i get money and maintain the church when i saw that the people were slipping away from me next and that you did not come within the days appointed god you did not come in time therefore i thought you are not there so i start a compromising when we pray our prayers are not heard so we are going after black magic we prayed we tried everything but nothing happened now they, we have started compromising you know why god knew that you will compromise that is why nothing happened god knew that you will go for black magic that is why when you prayed nothing happened god knew that you will deny him in order to please some human beings that is why your prayers were not heard and he said did not come within the days appointed and the philistines were mustering at mikmash next one so three things he said one is people were slipping away second you did not hear my prayer in time you did not come in time third lot of enemies around me these are the three reasons we are compromising my dear brothers and sisters our early church members they have never compromised i'm not telling that you should attack everyone and destroy everyone no you should love everyone you should forgive everyone you should accept everyone you should be compassionate to everyone but do not compromise the faith that we are into we believe faith is ours we should never compromise we can please anybody we can be lovable charitable compassionate we have to be like that doesn't mean we should compromise our faith we should bring everyone to desecrate our church and parish we should just bring everyone to have their faith inside our church this is not inculturation this is desecration this is not the anything that is biblical but it is totally against the biblical my dear brothers and sisters it is not only about the churches but also about each and every one's faith my dear brothers and sisters we are compromising with the holy confession we go on committing the same sin again and again and again thinking that we can go for confession we are desecrating jesus again again we read like this hebrew chapter 6 verse 4 and 4 to 6 let's put it together hebrew chapter 6 verse 4 to 6 for it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the holy spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of god and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away since on their own they are crucifying again the son of god and are holding him up to contempt my dear brothers and sisters let us read psalm 25 verse 14 Psalm 25 verse 14 Psalm 25 verse 14 The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him God will only have friendship with you only if you fear the Lord The fear of God means hatred to sin Fear of God means hatred to sin Proverb 8:13 The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech i hate my dear brothers and sisters fear of the lord that is why jesus had the fear of the lord we read hebrew chapter 5 verse 7 hebrew chapter 5 verse 7 we read like this in the days of his flesh when jesus was in the flesh in his body he had all the temptations in his body how did he overcome the temptation in the days of his flesh jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission because of his fear of the lord you know jesus could have just tolerated saying okay my father is so compassionate i am his son there is no problem if i commit sin if i ask forgiveness from god my father he will forgive me therefore i don't mind going for confession i don't mind committing sin 
Jesus could have committed at least one sin because he knows his father is so compassionate. He knows his father will forgive him. Then why did he not commit even a single sin? Why Mother Mary did not commit even a single sin? Mother Mary knows the Father, Heavenly Father is so compassionate, merciful and forgiving, forgiving Father. Then why she did not commit a one small sin? Even if she committed a small sin, won't God the Father forgive her? She knew God will forgive. Then why, did she, why didn't she uh, commit sin? Because she feared the Lord. There was fear of God inside of him, inside of Jesus, inside of Mother Mary. My dear brothers and sisters, if we have the fear of the Lord inside of us, we will be very careful. Now we have no fear of the Lord, but we are fear of human beings, fear of other legions, fear of other human beings, fear of husband, wife and children. We are fear of everyone except the fear of the Lord. We read like this, Psalm 111 verse 10. Psalm 111 verse 10. Psalm 111. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Luke 2.51. Luke 2.51. Let us read Luke 2.51. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. Verse 52. Jesus increased in wisdom. Increased in wisdom means increased in the fear of the Lord. Because fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's all close our eyes and pray. There are so many things to speak about these. We will speak in another day. My dear brothers and sisters. What we are trying to say today is this. Don't compromise. Let us follow the commandment of God. Just follow our Lord Jesus and the one God, there is no other God. Any substitution, any compromise, it will bring consequences in our life. There was terrible consequences for such sins in the Old Testament. And Bible also says there will be worse consequences in the New Testament. And we know because of that compromises, there was pandemic among the Israelites. Snakes biting and sicknesses and in the war they were defeated terribly their number was disappeared number reduced because of compromise today when we compromise and we are shaken and helpless in front of covid 19 we are helpless and in front of everyone and in front of the calamities in front of the uh, rainstorm in front of the hurricane in front of all the war and problems that we are taking taking place in today we feel helpless because we compromised therefore we need to repent every one of us from the beginning from the top to down all of us let us start from ourselves then the others will also repent let us ask forgiveness from god for these